Have you ever had the thoughts, I'm just not creative enough to be a front-end developer, or I have no idea where to even begin? If this sounds like you, I'm here to let you know that these are entirely valid feelings that everyone has in their journey, and there are five steps you can take right now to start improving your front-end skills, but you have to do all of them or this won't work. Step one, find inspiration. Have you ever been browsing the web and come across a site or feature that you thought looked incredible? Maybe it's a sleek nav menu or a cool hover effect, or perhaps it's the whole site that enthralled you. And here's a secret for you. It doesn't have to just be websites. It doesn't even have to be on your phone. Everywhere we go, we're using interfaces that have the potential to inspire. If you start paying attention to these interactions more and more, eventually you'll begin to realize inspiration can come from anywhere. Step two, appreciation. Take a moment to really appreciate each aspect of the design that drew you in. There's a reason why this particular interface caught your eye, and taking some time to really engage with it is a key part of the experience. Step three, analyzation. Now it's time to shift your mindset from appreciation to analyzation. There are likely several components to the feature you're immersed in, and rather than just thinking, wow, that's cool, and moving on, ask yourself, what are the different elements I'm seeing? What are the various interactions that I'm experiencing? Step four, deconstruction. Big problems like, how the heck do I do this, are not productive. Small questions like, how do I get some rectangles on the screen? And how do I space them apart appropriately, are far more manageable. Step five, reconstruction. Now it's time to work through each of the small problems from the deconstruction step one at a time. Here, we've got a bunch of rectangles all contained in another rectangle that's probably roughly 1.5 to two times bigger than the screen. Perhaps they algorithmically determine the sizes and positions, but that seems unnecessary. Let's just take 10 minutes to randomly size and position some divs in a similarly pleasing pattern. Now, it looks like the whole thing pans around as we move the mouse. I may not know exactly how to achieve this quite yet, but I can tell that when my mouse hits position 00, 0 in the upper left corner, the panable gallery should also be at 0, 0. And when my mouse hits the lower right corner, the panable area should do the same. So what this says to me is that I need to convert the X and Y positions of the mouse from a pixel value to a decimal value so I can shift the position of the gallery by that percentage. After storing my gallery element in a variable, I'll add a listener to the window to check for mouse movements and grab the mouse's X and Y position from the event. By dividing the mouse's current X and Y position by the width and height of the window respectively, I can determine the corresponding decimal values. Now I just have to multiply these values by the width and height of the gallery, update the CSS to transform the gallery's position by that number of pixels, and voila. Wait, no, that's the wrong direction. Multiply by negative one, and voila. Wait, no, that allows me to pan too far. Cut out the height and width of the window from my calculation, and, well, that's not very smooth. Instead, animate the position with JavaScript, and voila. Just like that, it's panning correctly. My next small problem is getting an image to show up smoothly on hover. First, I'll add a new image element inside of each tile. I'll set the height and width to 100%. Whoops, that looks a bit too stretchy. Object fit, cover, oh, and border radius inherit. Transition the opacity and scale on hover and voila, what? Why can I see the background color coming through around the border? Okay, also scale the image a tiny amount on hover. And voila, just like that, a smooth and easy transition from a color to an image. So you see, once you've done this enough times, you never run into any issues at all. Everything goes perfectly smoothly every time. So if you can simply remember the acronym IADDER, as in, oh, I can't believe you lost that fish. I know, I thought I had her. Then you will have no problem at all remembering these steps. That leads me to the actual final step, rinse and repeat. Continue to adopt this perspective shift in your day-to-day -day life of appreciating and analyzing the various interfaces you see and then practicing recreating the ones you really like. Eventually, you'll start to see some improvements in your ability to design and create your own features. And if you still find yourself concerned with not being good enough, then I highly recommend watching this video next where I take a deeper look at some of my own web development anxieties and how to overcome them.